Hey, Owen here, and today I'm going to be building, weathering, and reviewing this 1 to 144 scale Diagostini Thunderbird 2 kit. Model Space provided me with this kit for free, however, they have not paid me or told me what to say. The pod doors have a small metal pin which needs pressing into place to make the hinge. I found it was easiest to do this with tweezers. Make sure that the door stopper is positioned like this. I used plastic glue here, but I'd recommend that you use super glue. I used pegs to hold the parts together while the glue dried. I repeated the same process for the rear door of the pod. The two floor sections were joined with screws. After attaching the springs, I positioned the door and secured it with screws. The process was repeated for the rear door of the pod. Each of the pod frames was secured in place with screws. Each part had a small number on it to make it easy to match with the correct slot. The top beam was carefully pressed into place. After joining the wall parts with plastic glue, I waited for it to dry before gluing on the small details. The front wall was secured in place with screws and rectangular washers. This process was repeated for the back wall of the pod. The two halves were secured together with screws. Two rollers were made by slotting a metal rod through a plastic cylinder. Ten screws secured the pod floor to the base. Little plugs were provided to cover up the screws. The details were then glued in place with plastic glue. So far everything was fitting well and was nicely detailed. Before applying glue to these railings, I'd recommend that you scrape away the paint with a knife as this allows the glue to bond the plastic more securely. The walkway was very difficult to get into place and the plastic glue struggled to bond the parts. I'd recommend using super glue. I had to hold the walkway in place until the glue dried. There are various details which need to be added to the pod walls. I secured all of these in place with plastic glue.
the pod walls were glued to the sides of the pod. I used plastic glue here, but again I'd recommend using super glue. I used pegs to hold the parts together while the glue dried. The ceiling was glued into the top of the pod. All of the pod walls and roof could now be slotted together without any glue. This allows you to take the pod apart again later. Pod 4 was almost exactly the same construction as pod 3, with a few exceptions. I began the construction of Thunderbird 4's launch ramp. Metal rods needed to be inserted into the hinges, then the slider was secured inside the base with screws. The top section of the ramp had two hinges. The second one proved to be very difficult to get the metal rod into. It took me a while to get the hinge completed. Details were added to the ramp and secured in place with extra thin cement. The ramp extension slotted into place. There were a few badly placed injection pin markings on this part. The whole launch ramp was now finished and could be glued to the floor of pod 4. This completed the construction of the pods. The windscreen pressed into place without any glue. The cockpit had some reasonable detail including seats and a steering wheel which needed gluing in place. The cockpit LED and rear walls slotted into position and I then secured it with extra thin cement. I constructed the missile launcher and then the whole cockpit section was screwed into place. The lower section of the nose had several panels which needed screwing in place. The model comes with a testing circuit which you will need to put three AA batteries into. I could then check that the cockpit lights were working. The lower fuselage was screwed into place. Details were glued into place with super glue. I screwed in the battery compartment and then the power switch. I began the construction of the legs, sliding a piece of plastic tube inside the spring then slotting on the rest of the brass sections. I made four of these. The legs were slotted into place. The landing feet were attached with a small screw. Gear wheels for the legs were put in place, followed by a gearbox and the main motor. Small metal rollers needed to be placed carefully into the model. I pressed the springs down into place, then attached the cover.
The boosters were fairly simple to construct. Both had a red LED light inside, and one of the boosters had a speaker. I made sure to mark the speaker wire with a piece of masking tape. Metal mesh was secured in place with super glue and left to dry. After securing the boosters in place, the wires could now be plugged into the circuit board. Each socket is labelled so that you can't mix it up. I began constructing the tailpiece, securing all the parts in place with plastic glue. Lots of little fins had to be cut from their sprues, and then I secured them in place with extra thin cement. The tailpiece was screwed together and then the supports were added. Translucent tinted plastic was added to the wing tips, then the wing clamps were added to the lower fuselage. The upper fuselage parts were joined with screws. The upper and lower fuselage halves could then be put together, with the addition of a spring to make the missile launcher pop up. The parts were held together with masking tape while I flipped the kit over, and then they were joined with 15 screws. Finally, the tailpiece and wings were popped into place, completing the construction of Thunderbird 2. The controller was easily constructed. You'll need to add two AAA batteries to make it work. It was now time to weather the kit. I chose to do this with artists' oil paints as they are very versatile and allowed me to work quickly. I applied a variety of greens, blues, yellows and browns as well as white and black to my palette and roughly blended them. This meant that I could create a lot of colour variations. I dotted various shades over the model, then I used a second brush to blend them out. If the effect became too strong, I could remove some of the paint with a dry paper towel. This was a very fun experimental process which I really enjoyed doing. There's no correct way to work, but I tried to mix darker shades of green along the panel lines and lighter shades of green into the centre of the panels. I worked this technique over the entire model, doing a section at a time. This technique doesn't take long and I really love the results. Once Thunderbird 2 is discoloured, I moved on to the pods. I repeated the same technique but worked more shades of brown into the lower sections of the pods where dust and dirt might build up. Once the exterior of the pods had been left to dry for 24 hours, I could then move on to weathering the interiors. I applied a thick layer of paint to the floors and doors of the pods and then wiped away the excess with a dry paper towel until I had the dirty, streaked effect that I wanted. The rest of the details received a dark grey-brown wash, which I created by mixing the oil paint with a lot of paint thinner, in this case white spirit. 
I worked this wash into all the cracks and details. Before the wash had time to dry, I blended and wiped it away with a dry paper towel. This was repeated for both the walls and all the other details inside the pod. Once the interiors of the pods were complete, it was time to add the final weathering effects. One of the most prominent weathering techniques on the real Thunderbird 2 model is the dark black-brown streaking which runs backwards on the fuselage. I achieved this by applying some black oil paint along the panel line, then using a large, soft brush, dragging the paint back in the direction of the airflow. If I felt like this was overdone, I could soften the effect by blending it away with a dry paper towel or a cotton bud. After applying this to the fuselage, I continued the same technique on the pods. Once I was happy with this, I left the model to dry for 48 hours. Once dry, the model was complete. So overall I can say that all of the parts fitted very well and the whole kit came together pretty quickly and very easily which is good and I would say that there's some nice detail moulded into the parts um, and it's nice that it's all pre-painted you don't have to faff around with decals and stuff so that's cool and it has some cool features uh, some of which I don't think are as good as others the LED lighting in the cockpit and the engines is pretty nice I think that the sound effects though, they're not great. Maybe my expectations were too high, but I'm a bit disappointed by that. And then also with the hydraulic legs, I found that the gears keep slipping. Um, I don't know if that's the kit or if it's the way that I've put it together, but I followed the troubleshooting guide and I've repaired it about four or five times now and it keeps happening which isn't good and this means that each time I have to repair it I have to undo 23 screws in total to get to the leg parts put them back in position and then redo all 23 screws and what this then means is that obviously I can't plug up any of the screw holes in case I need to take it apart again and the screw holes make it look a bit like a toy from underneath which is disappointing but it does come with a lot of parts and 20 supporting vehicles but is it good value for money i don't know but overall i have had fun building this um, and weathering it as well i really enjoyed the weathering i thought that the artist's oil paints were great and i'm definitely going to be using them more in the future i think it's made the kit look really good i definitely think that weathering this takes it from looking like a toy to a scale model so I think it's really important that you do some good weathering on it. So anyway, that's my thoughts on this kit. Uh, leave your thoughts in the comments below if you've built it or if you just watched the video and you have something to say about it. And don't forget, if you would be interested in buying it, you can use the discount code to get 5% off. So thank you very much for watching this video series. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.